Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we will look for few simple application of the theory that we did over last two classes. That is we will try to find out the level surfaces, the static fluid pressure distribution for some simple cases. The simplest possible case is quite well known to you that if we have a fluid say contained in some container and is completely at rest subjected to only gravitational force. You can write the three equations that we had yesterday that is grad p equal to rho f hmm. grad p equal to rho f that is the equation we had rho f or minus rho grad psi. So, when the body force is simply the gravitational force, you can write this equation grad p will give you three component d p d x, d p d y, d p d z or d p d x 1, d p d x 2, d p d x 3 and in this case only that x 3 has the right hand side f is simply g which is along x 3 direction. Okay. So, if we consider that example I think you have already done it let us say that this is fluid and we denote this x 1 or if you want we can now write x also. We call this direction to be z and the direction perpendicular to this plane is the y. There is only gravitational force. and this equation can be simply written as d p d x equal to 0, d p d y equal to 0 and d p d z equal to 0 <coughs> minus rho g. you can get the pressure very easily <coughs> the hydrostatic pressure which is simply rho g z plus a constant and that constant is actually the pressure at the free surface. So, this is the simplest possible application and as you can see the level surfaces are the horizontal planes they are the level surfaces for pressure as well as for psi the level surfaces for pressure and psi are simply the horizontal plane. At any horizontal plane both the pressure as well as the potential energy they are constant of course, also density because that is what we found that they will have same level surface density pressure and the potential energy will have same level surface and in this case these level surfaces are just plane horizontal plane. <coughs> of course, there is one thing you should note here that if density is non uniform if density is non uniform then we may not be in a position to integrate these equations unless we know explicitly how density varies we would not be able to integrate it. So, in this case we have considered the density to be uniform. Now, we would like to change this problem a little bit. <coughs> we will consider that <coughs> this container is now moving with a uniform steady acceleration 
the container is now moving with a uniform steady acceleration and let us say to the right. along x 1 direction let us call it a 1. This a 1 is just to represent that it is in the direction 1 ok. x 1 direction and this is the x 3 direction as before <laughs> and this acceleration uniform steady acceleration in the x 1 direction we are denoting it by a 1. So, now this container has a steady uniform acceleration. Now, with respect to a reference frame outside of this container the fluid is of course, not at rest, but in case of a steady acceleration if you take your reference frame which is also moving with that same uniform acceleration with respect to that reference frame the fluid in this container is at rest and we can apply these equations. In that case, let us say without proceeding further, can you say what type of level surface we will have? Inclined. So, um, <laughs> in one side it will go up, in one side it will come down. So, in this situation which side will go up? Opposite side of the acceleration that is in this case this side will go up that means, say that the level surface will be something like something like this ok. Now, let us find out <laughs> you might have as it seems that you perhaps have solved this problem sometime by using some other approach, hmm. but in this case we will use this approach that we have developed that is writing the equation grad p equal to rho f or minus rho grad psi. Now, in the vector sense the body force per unit mass f is what? If we write in your conventional vector notation what is f? Minus, minus a in the x 1 direction ok you are calling it i ok fine call it i minus g z g k. What is this that potential function or the potential energy per unit mass psi what will be psi the potential energy function remember f is minus grad psi f is minus grad psi then what is psi then Yes. Yes. So, what is that psi? Ax, Ax plus Gz. Huh? Okay. As you are saying, or we will also call it A1 x1 plus Gx3. Okay. In this case, perhaps this will be convenient to write for you Ax plus Gz. 
this I am writing so that you keep remembering it and have the practice. <coughs> okay, now, so you can from here you can find out what is the level surface of psi. This gives a level surface of psi. Okay. That is z equal to level surface of psi or what? Level surfaces of psi A x plus g z equal to constant, that is the level surface, and what is that? So, z equal to minus A by g x plus any constant. These are the level surfaces of psi and also these are the level surfaces for pressure and density. All three psi, p and rho all three have same level surfaces and also this the body force, the body force vector will always be normal to that level surface. <laughs> now, to find the pressure, we have to integrate certain equations and as we mentioned already that we can integrate if we assume that the density is uniform. For non-uniform density, we must know the exact explicit variation of density. So, just to avoid that, let us consider uniform density. Then, what are the equations we have now for pressure d p d x equal to minus okay, I was writing a 1, so somehow sometime it has become a, let us write it a only minus a x. d p d y equal to 0, there is no force in the y direction and d p d z is oh sorry not minus a x minus a rho yeah. d p d z is minus rho g. Let us integrate the all three equation. The first one gives what? The first equation gives on integration p equal to that is all minus rho a x plus how do you get that plus g by z? Achha. another plus another function of y z okay that you are seeing the function g okay let us do not use g because g is already we are using as gravitational acceleration so we can write this as say a phi phi x z okay oh sorry y z yes phi y z. The second equation gives p equal to another function. If we want, we can denote this as phi 1, phi 2. Hmm. So, the first function let it phi 1 and the second function in this case is what? It is simply phi 2 x z. And the third gives p equal to minus rho a z oh sorry rho g z plus phi 3 x y.
then if we combine those three what will we get? So, looking to these three, we can clearly see that this pressure is not a function of y, there is no y dependency anywhere. The third equation contains a function of y, but the second clearly shows that the pressure is not a function of y. So, in the from the first and third, we can drop the y, this is function of z only and this is function of x only. And then comparing this first and sec third relation, we can clearly say that pressure is minus rho g z minus rho a x plus just a simple constant, let us call it c. This constant can be obtained by satisfying or trying to find the pressure at a fixed location for x and z. So, we can satisfy that let us say at the top left corner in the container at the top left corner. And if we or let us say still easier, if we make that point as the origin because that is what we are actually doing x and z, the origin is here at the top left corner here, okay. which has x equal to 0, z equal to 0. <coughs> and then what, what is pressure at that point? So, pressure of the atmosphere if we consider atmosphere of course, we can take that to be 0 also. In that case, we will get what is known as gauge pressure. <laughs> so, at if we consider that at x equal to 0, z equal to 0, pressure is simply the atmospheric pressure, then from this relation this C becomes the atmospheric pressure. So, and this relation become And again, you can find the level surface of pressure, you will see that is the same thing. <coughs> level surface of pressure coincide with the level surface of psi. <coughs> and also, you can check. For the free surface, that is the to inclined top surface, that you can set that C to be 0 for this, which is called the free surface. For the free surface, you can set C to be 0, though in any other lines which are parallel to it will have different value of C. And you can also see that the direction of the force vector is perpendicular to that right, surface. 
little more to think to you. Now, let us assume that this acceleration changing its direction periodically. What do you expect to happen then? Of course, that problem will be a little complex, so we will not not possible to solve here, but uh, some idea you can get from this itself. The acceleration is changing its sign. <coughs> of course, it is no longer a then a, a steady state problem like this, it is an unsteady problem, but what do you think will happen to the free surface? No, no, look to this. Your ex acceleration was to the right. Okay, in this problem that we handled, the acceleration was to the right. Okay, the free surface on the top goes up. On the right, it goes down. If we change the direction of the acceleration, what will the opposite will happen? Now, if the acceleration direction changes periodically, so this will also happen periodically. Okay is likely to happen and <coughs> the because of this transience the free surface no longer remain exactly straight, but anyway we will not be able to go into details of that what shape the free surface will have or something, but this much you can understand that now this will the liquid inside will have an oscillation once like this and again like this, this will continue. And also think about one thing that in this process here the left side has gone up depending upon the magnitude of this acceleration the amount that is going up above the undisturbed free surface this was the undisturbed free surface we will call it the mean surface let us say it has gone this much up because of this acceleration for higher acceleration or larger acceleration this may still go up and if the container has not sufficient amount of height available still the fluid will spill out it is possible. So, how much this is the amount which is still available that is actually called as free board. Okay. So, how much free board should be given that you can decide that okay, in a real life situation say where you are going to construct this type of container okay, or design this type of container and you know that this is likely to experience or this is this will experience a periodic type of or nearly periodic type of acceleration which may have this type of magnitude then you must know what type of free board you must provide. Think about the situation a dam again another a container like this. Okay. In the actual problem of course, the cases are little more complex you will not get a uniform steady acceleration the acceleration magnitude will change continuously all those things, but this gives a fair idea of that what type of problem you are going to face that you must have sufficient amount of free board otherwise the water that is contained in the dam that will spill out <coughs> over it. And not only that, that because of these oscillations it will apply some other type of load on the dam structure. The dam is containing the liquid, so the liquid is water, so that water is exerting certain amount of pressure whether that water is moving or not, but in case that water accelerates because of some acceleration like this. Then, in addition to that pressure, it will apply certain different type of pressure, certain different type of load, and that I must be capable of withstanding that load also. See, so that may not be a 
daily occurrence, it may be a frequent occurrence. See all natural this type of reservoirs, at least they are they do experience a highly unsteady fluctuating load earthquake. In earthquake also the ground accelerates of course, very rapidly, very rapidly and almost randomly. <coughs> we will extend this problem to <coughs> a little different, but almost similar type of problem, where there is no uniform steady acceleration as it is here, but let us say the container is rotating with a uniform rotational speed, let us call it omega. The container is rotating at a uniform rotational speed, say omega. Again, with respect to a rotational frame, which is rotating with an angular velocity of omega, the fluid in the container is again steady with a pseudo body force with a pseudo body force coming because of the centrifugal acceleration. <coughs> so, <coughs> what will be the say the potential function in that case. Container with a steady rotation. Again, first of all, consider the density is uniform. Consider uniform density so that we can carry out the integrations. How will the free surface look like? How will the free surface look like? Hmm? Parabolic in two dimensional case. For a three dimension, it is a paraboloid of revolution. Fine. Right. 
will the free surface go up or come down or what that is the is the parabola will start from here or from somewhere else will it be like this or like this how down That means it will come down somewhere here. Acha, at the wall it will go up. It is something like this, you will say. Something like this. Okay. <laughs> so, if the free surface is like this, then our theory says that the force that is acting on it is everywhere normal to it. The force, the body force that is acting on it is everywhere perpendicular to these level surfaces. The free surface is also one of the level surfaces. Okay. Now, let us say how do you want to start? Starting with psi, the potential energy per unit mass. So, what is the potential energy per unit mass in this case? Or if you think that okay, it is easier or convenient for you to write the force first instead of the potential energy. And okay, as far as the coordinate system are concerned, you can use any either you write x y z or x 1 x 2 x 3 or if you prefer x r theta. What is psi? Or let us say what is f, whichever is convenient to you. The force has two sources the gravitational source and the other is the centrifugal. So, how much is a for psi? Tell me whichever you like f equal to or psi equal to f. Okay. What is f? Omega square? How can you take r equal to x? You cannot take r equal to x. Shift, huh, origin you shift at the center, no problem. Wherever you can take the origin, only is, uh, only that now our reference system is rotating with the angular velocity of omega. That's all. So that with respect to that reference frame, the fluid is at rest. Because our theory is at this stage is for fluid at rest. So reference system should satisfy that. Other than that, you can do anything with that reference system. No, no, you tell me something. <laughs> the 
the centrifugal force should be proportional to r not x okay and r is not x it is x square plus y square to the power half so either you keep it in r or you keep it in xy that's uh, whichever you prefer you may remain in xyz coordinate system or you, can, you may move to r theta and of course the axial axial coordinate will still remain the cylindrical coordinate system you may remain in the cartesian system or you may move to cylindrical system that is up to you so okay the force is minus gk hmm okay and plus or minus plus or minus yes plus or minus in a it is minus okay minus omega square r Ah, you can uh, you can use either you can use either that r can be replaced as x square plus y square plus half and also you can write in terms of i and j using that they are all fine anything but in this case it is in the radial direction so let us write that something like this a unit vector in the radial direction Yes, that is what I was uh, asking. What it is, plus or minus? <laughs> there is half the division. Why? See, this is a pseudo force. This is a pseudo force. So there will be a change in sign. So, what it will be? It is plus. Then, what is now psi? What is now psi? psi is again or f is minus grad psi so what will be psi So, you are writing in terms of x square okay, fine psi is then g z minus half of omega square r square or and this gives of course, the level surfaces straight away without proceeding further we can say what are the level surfaces from here and the level surfaces for pressure and density are the same. 
which shows okay, it is a paraboloid of revolution with vertical axis shifted vertically. <coughs> now, if we want to find the pressure, the pressure distribution, then we write that equation for pressure. what is say d p d r what is d p d r ok this is what is d p d r along the Yes, then what is P? P is little louder half rho omega square r square minus rho g z plus c. Okay, what is C then? <coughs> what is then C? Hmm. Okay, above the free surface again assume that the it is atmospheric pressure, but is C then P A only atmospheric pressure as before in the last place? Which z? Z is a variable. Height of free surface is again not constant. The height of free surface is different at different point. Uh, midpoint, which is the say the minimum height. At the middle, it is the minimum height at the wall it is the height is maximum at the middle height is minimum. So, we can call z minimum or z min then what is final form of so evaluate c find c at r equal to 0 z equal to zero <laughs> or z equal to not zero z equal to the say if the you have taken your axis system here no this is what you are taking your axis system this is what you are taking your axis system at the middle undisturbed midpoint. So, with respect to that this has a height of if this height is taken as the undisturbed say z 0 z 0 and this distance we call it z min.
So, when you satisfy your equation at this point is z 0 minus z min. Hmm? So, it is z 0 minus z min. Yes, then what is c? Or p in final form. <coughs> yes, what is the p in final form? P A only atmospheric pressure. P A plus the top row. R square minus rho g z minus rho g z naught is 0 hmm. rho g z z minus z i am writing that z first z minus z min Hmm. And what is the cytostatic pressure at Z naught? At Z naught, the liquid depth is 0. Hmm? The depth is 0 there. Hmm. In this case, it has become above the liquid surface. All right. <laughs> so, there is no question of that coming into the picture. <laughs> Sorry, Z plus the second is also plus. Or minus. In bracket also, it should come minus. No, no, that is, I think, what you are doing. You are not considering that it is the depth below the free surface, below the undisturbed free surface that you have considered and still it is coming no this z all these z are negative all these z are negative that you have not taken into account all these z because your origin what you are considering only negative z what you are considering is only negative z. Even that c z, z 0 what we are calling, which is the distance between the undisturbed free surface to the bottom, undisturbed free surface. So, the total liquid depth that itself is negative, because your Reference system is above it. <coughs> so, 
and <coughs> I think that part you have not uh, considered that your reference is on the above. So, even z 0 what we are calling in actual coordinate when you substitute you should consider it the in the negative sense. <coughs> now, you can now find out how much it has risen with respect to the undisturbed sea surface that means, this height and even both these heights this height as well as this height. You may consider the volume to find how much is this z mean or how much is this this distance above the undisturbed sea surface that can be very easily obtained by considering the volume the total volume of the fluid is unchanged. So, before this disturbance it was just a in the shape of a cylinder you can consider a radius for the entire container to be a some r and that height is z 0. So, pi r square z 0 is the total volume of the fluid and now you can find out how much will be the volume for this with this free surface okay. and that will give you this z mean and okay, if we denote again that this is z max. So, z mean and z max that can be obtained from there. And this distance will come as this distance will come as you say that omega square r square by 4 g. <laughs> you can check that. <laughs> you can think about an alternative variation of this problem, another variation of this problem that you may try yourself. That is in this case let us say the container was rotating about a vertical axis. Think now the container is rotating about a horizontal axis. You can arrange your container accordingly so that it does not look odd. The container is rotating about horizontal axis then say how will be the level surfaces whether they are still parabola of revolution or something else. <coughs> that of course, you can try yourself and see what you get. We will think about another variation of this problem what we what we are discussing uh, uniformly rotating fluid. Let us say the fluid density is not uniform is non uniform then of course, we cannot integrate and find this pressure in this analytical expression form, okay. but even if the density of the fluid is non uniform you can see that the psi and f they do not change psi do not change at all which is potential energy per unit mass. So, the level surfaces will remain same. A fluid which is rotating about a vertical axis, whether the density is uniform or not, the level surfaces will be again paraboloid of revolution and okay, the same level surfaces for pressure, potential energy, and density. Only when the density is uniform, on all level surfaces, density has same value. But if density is non uniform, then on different level surfaces like pressure and potential energy, density will also have different value. Okay. Now, think that you place a spherical uh, sphere a small sphere made up of some metal and you place it in it. And then think where this if the sphere is uniform where will this sphere rest will it remain anywhere wherever we place assuming that okay, there is a level surface there is some 
first of all it will try to locate a level surface where the weight of that displaced liquid is same as the weight of the sphere. Let us assume that we have found a level surface that there is some rho it is not of everywhere it will not be same because rho is since rho is changing the weight of the displaced or mass of the displaced liquid will change at different depth. Let us say at some level surface the density has appropriate value which will give this amount of mass. Then in that level surface will the sphere remain wherever it is wherever you put it because that is what the laws of flotation says no that it will remain at a any location in that depth. If a body floats either completely submerged that is also floating when the body is completely submerged or when the body is partially submerged they are all floating that wherever you keep it it will remain there. But will that happen in this case also? Let us say as an example that okay, we have found different level surfaces and at this level surface the mass of this displaced volume is same as the mass of the sphere. Then will it remain here or here or here or here anywhere we put it will it remain there? Why? No, the energy is same, it is the level surface for that energy, no? Energy is same. But the energy is the total energy, no? Potential energy. Why should it rotate? See, in this situation, what you know that the mass of the displaced water and mass of the sphere should balance each other that alone is not sufficient. Also the centrifugal force experienced by that displaced fluid <coughs> need to be same as the centrifugal force experienced by the sphere. Hmm. So, for a uniform sphere such a position will not be found it will be only possible at the lowest most position that is at the middle it will come to the middle. However, if you make the cylinder non uniform if you make the cylinder non uniform then it can remain somewhere else even possibly it may go to the wall. 